Hey everyone, I hope you all are having a really good week. So what's been streaming through my hearing aid this week has been a lot of Aerosmith. So actually I dusted off Toys in the Attic, the, the title track of uh, the Toys in the Attic album, uh, for the first time in quite a while, uh, I think it was yesterday. And I, it's such a great tune, just that E blues riff and you know, just the way everything's hitting hard. I, I love it, it's such a great song. Um, let's see. But yeah, of course, you know, with the Toys in the Attic album, you got, you know, um, Lock This Way and Sweet Emotion, which is like two of Aerosmith's biggest songs, right? Um, but the other, the album that I've mainly been listening to uh, from them is Rocks. Actually, there's kind of an interesting story about how I kind of came across Rocks, because obviously I knew a lot about Aerosmith, you know, growing up. You know, you'd hear like Love in an Elevator and the Rock and Roller Coaster at Disney World. You know, they were playing all these Aerosmith tunes on the ride. Um... <laughs> But of course, you got songs like Dream On and all that as well. You know, like classic, classic Aerosmith tunes. But how I kind of came across the Rocks album is really interesting because that's a really legendary album, right? Uh, but how I found out about it was actually from Slash. Because what I like to do, you know, Slash is a huge, huge influence on my playing. He's someone that, you know, I'm always going to look up to and, uh, you know, always be inspired by. But what I like to do with a lot of my heroes, like Slash and all these other guys, is I like to find out, you know, what they listen to or kind of find articles or interviews about them talking about their favorite albums. And, you know, Slash talks a lot about the Stones and the Who and early 60s rock and roll. But the album that he said that really kind of changed everything for him, and uh, he talked about this in his book, too, that I read a little bit. He said uh, when he heard Rocks by Aerosmith for the first time, when he heard that album, you know, everything changed for him. You know, hearing, like, Back in the Saddle, and then it went into Last Child. And actually, my favorite song on the album is the third track in called Rats in the Cellar. The groove on that tune is just infectious. I mean, it's just, you know, it's it's as good as it gets, in my opinion. But then you got, like, Lickin' a Promise is really good, and Get the Lead Out has a great, like, um, groove and riff in it. I mean, the whole album, just front to back, is, is fantastic. Uh, but yeah, it's actually from Slash, how I kind of, you know found my way to the uh, Rocks album. So, and also this morning, actually, I was scrolling around on Twitter and I randomly came across a video of the Joe Perry Project. And it was a song called, um, uh, <laughs> hang on. I was jamming it this morning. Cut me a break. I just found, about, uh, found it this morning. It's a song called, um, I've Got the Rock and Rolls Again from the Joe Perry Project. And, you know, it kind of starts off with that Muddy Waters uh, Manish Boy you know, that riff kind of thing. So at first I was kind of like, oh, it's going to be a bluesy tune, but then it goes into this great grooving, fast, uh, hard rock thing. And it's, I've been learning it all morning. It's so good. Um, so that's what I've been streaming through my hearing aid this week. Lots of Aerosmith. Hope you all are staying safe and, <laughs> safe and healthy, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.